Do you guys have that little corner in your garden where tools get collected, leftover materials of projects just end up making it look ugly and just not usable? Yeah, me neither. But I do have this little corner over here where lately I have been wanting to do something, but I just couldn't make up my mind on what to do. This area is in the back of the property. It's right next to the alley and we have been using it to park our vehicles. Sometimes we collect the soil here and it's just really not a convenient place for us to use it for something garden related. But I have been playing with the idea lately of maybe making a compost area or maybe using it for raised beds. I quickly realized that the amount of compost that I need for my garden is quite a lot, to be honest. And I don't know that I wanna use that space to maybe use a little bit of that compost that I will get from it for the rest of the season. It just does not make sense for me to use the space for something that is not going to really benefit me in the end. If you live in a small urban home, you know that space is precious and I don't have a lot of it. So every little corner that I have, I have to really plan for it and I do have to make sure that I get the most of it. So once again, I decided to make some raised beds and I really wanted some tall raised beds. In another video, I make a comment that if I had to do it all over again, I will definitely go with really tall raised beds. It just makes more sense for me. I don't have to bend over quite by a lot and they look a lot cuter in my opinion. So I volunteer my husband to help me in making these beds. And you guys, this video is going to take quite a lot of days to finish because while my husband is here helping me with the making of these raised beds, it's just going to take a lot for me to get the soil, fill the beds, do the mulch, do the weeding. I really want to finish this place so that the weeds don't take over. And this place right here is full of gravel. So come and join me while I go through this process. I hope that you maybe get inspired. Maybe you get the energy to go out there and actually work on that little corner that we all have where we just, you know, don't know what to do with it. That is crappy. No, that's not going to work. The raised beds are not quite done just yet. Um, there is a couple of pieces that my husband is going to put inside the, the beds to kind of attach the, the bottom and the top pieces together. Uh, we ran out of screws and 
By the time they went to the store, got the screws, the rain showed up uh, yesterday and it started raining almost for like all day. So uh, I'm thankful for the rain, but uh, we haven't been able to do a lot. I was able to get some mulch, some mulch that I'm going to put around here, but also I went and grabbed a few things to make my own mix for this race bed. I went to Menards and I got a bunch of goodies. I have uh, a combination of a lot of things and it was raining, like I said, it rained a lot. So uh, when we went and grabbed all of these things at Menards, it was raining, so I just kind of threw everything here together. Um, I got some potty mix. I got some good pro mix potty mix. It is very, very fluffy. Uh, I got some compost. I got a few bags of that. I got some topsoil. I, they're all mixed in here. I feel like the combination of a good compost, a potty mix that I like, and and topsoil is going to be pretty good as far as the consistency goes. I don't just want to fill the beds with topsoil because it feels, I feel like it's a little bit too heavy. So that's why I'm adding compost and I'm adding a uh, potting mix. But I'm also adding uh, a bag of um, warm cast things to each bed. Uh, right now, it's just kind of everything is on pause because it was raining and also my husband hasn't finished the beds just yet. Um, hopefully today he gets home uh, at a decent hour from work and he'll finish the beds and then I can just fold them up and then finish um, removing the weeds, removing some rocks that I have here that have been kind of collecting here. I feel like we all have these corners in our gardens where things just kind of get thrown and you know, at the end of each season, you just end up with a mountain of things that you meant to use, that were extras from projects and that you just don't have a good space for. Uh, but I'm going to try to use every single piece of those rocks uh, here and there. And uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I went to my local Home Depot and I grabbed a couple of things. I got, I got some wood fabric that I'm going to basically wrap inside. Uh, the perimeter of the raised beds because I want to make sure that uh, none of the soil kind of goes in between um, in between the divisions of the top and bottom parts. It's just an extra step that you don't have to take but I am going to take it. Uh, and I also got some pine bark nuggets which is what I have been using this year for filling up the spaces in between my raised beds. Originally, in the last couple of years, I have been using the mini pine nuggets from Lowe's. They come in a pink bag and the bags are kind of huge. I think they're two cubic feet if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, they are huge and they're not priced that bad. Uh, I normally just grab a few bags at the beginning of the spring and I just spray those around my rice beds. But this year I have not been able to find it locally. They're always out of stock. They don't have the inventory. Um, and I just went to Home Depot and grabbed these pine bark nuggets uh, which they're somewhat the same uh, the sizes are a little bit smaller these guys are a little bit smaller in pieces um, but they'll do the job and it's it's totally fine so I grab a total of nine bags this time we'll see I am just planning to do the back part I still haven't decided how far I'm gonna take it because this part of the house this part of uh, where I live is this is the alley part like I'm park on the back driveway of, of the property and the alley just runs that way. And hopefully it looks a lot better than what we started with.
It is a beautiful morning here in central Indiana, you guys. The sun is just starting to come out. Mosquitoes are like all around me. I haven't sprayed yet today, uh, but I'm really, really happy on how this little corner, this little uh, back area of, of the kitchen garden is turning out to be. I definitely um, spent more money than I wanted to because my gosh, it took me a lot, a lot of, um, topsoil, garden soil, potting mix, compost to fill these, these really, really tall raised beds. But I just wanted to get it done. Um, I had some branches that I had been collecting in the last couple of weeks and I used those for the bottom of the other raised bed, but still it was a lot of money for those. I am still not done yet. I have a couple of things that I need to finish. Uh, one, I want to paint these beds. I want to paint them black, but my husband told me that I really need to wait at least a few weeks before I paint these beds because um, the paint may not, may not take because it's, they're a little still wet. I don't know. So I'm just going to wait. Um, I have the paint, so I'm just going to wait. And two, I need to finish setting up the irrigation for these beds. I have water coming into these raised beds. I have a I have a uh, valve where I can just turn on and off the water here, but I don't have the quarter inch tubing, the actual uh, tubing that I need for watering these beds. I ran out of the tubing. Those are ordered, they should be arriving in the next couple of days, uh, and I'm just going to install those. It will take me like really, really no time to set those up. And what I'll do is that I'll just probably use, uh, instead of having an end cap at each end, I'm just going to start them here, and then I am just going to end it back into the water line. It's just going to be a lot easier that way. And I'll probably have, for this bed, I'll probably have about three lines of tubing. I'll decide when I'm installing them. Uh, if you guys want to know about what kind of irrigation I have in my raised beds, I did show you that in a couple of videos ago. Uh, I'll try to put a link in the description below so that way we're not repeating here. As far as the plans that I have for this raised bed and for the other one as well, I kind of just took a walk at my local Lowe's and I look at all of their inventory, which actually they have a lot. Even though we're in the middle of June, they still have a lot of things. So. I found a few things that I didn't really have already uh, grown in my garden, just so that it will make sense. But I have two tomatillo plants. Look at these guys. They are absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to have two. I don't know if they'll be in this bed just yet. I am, right now I'm just kind of playing with the position of everything. I also purchased a, I think it's a sun sugar. I purchased another sun sugar cherry tomato. These are my favorite but by far. I grabbed a couple of sugar baby watermelons. These are the smaller ones. Because I have all of this area with the with the mulch, I have about a good, I don't know, five by five by fifteen area of just mulch. I think that's something that um, kind of trails. I, I have the perfect spot for that. I have a cucumber and i grab a few bell peppers i have a red be bell pepper green one and a red one i also have a bunch a bunch of seeds i went through my seed collection and i kind of like pick and choose a few seeds flowers and vegetables and i also visited one of my local garden nurseries gay woods they are here in central Indiana, and I have a few things that um, they didn't really have a lot. They don't really have, at this time of the year, uh, much, because literally they bring everything early in the spring and things just fly off the shelves. But I found this um, black cream tomato. They sell them by, by four. I really just need one. I don't know what I'll do with the rest. I'll probably give them to one of my neighbors. And I found a Carolina Gold tomato. I'm excited about this one. I don't have these two in my collection. I also grab a bunch of flowers. These are Salvia Evolution Violet. They didn't have the uh, Victoria Blue Salvia, but these are very, very similar. And I grab a few of these guys. Grab some basil, even though I can just plant them from seed and they're looking a little sad because again, it's like, not the season to buy them but um, i'm just going to prune these guys like i already showed you another video i'm going to prune them and hopefully the plants will just bush out 
but also one of the things that I got that I am not sure and I talked to the guy there and he also wasn't quite sure were these dill now this dill is already looking a little bit sad I grabbed two plants of them um, it's looking a little bit sad what I'm going to do is that I am going to get rid of the the brown leaves it's already flowering in this little container and I don't know I, I might um, and I need your help with this here if you know the answer to this leave it in the comments if I prune if I prune these dill plants like let's say where another shoot is coming will they keep on flourishing and getting big like I'm going to give it the space definitely the root system here is it's actually not that bad but will dill will it flourish if I give it a nice prune or is this it so I asked him the the guy at Gatewoods I asked him and he wasn't sure about you know what the answer was he pretty much just told me that he just plants them once when they're a lot smaller and then he the you know the plants just take off and he never prunes them but um so I thought okay well I am going to start some from seed but also I am going to try this just so that I know what the answer is um and because of that he gave them to me for free so anyway I grabbed two of them and I am definitely going to prune them and plant them I also got like the cutest sign it says carrots so I have all of these plants and I also have a cucamelon a dahlia and another tomato uh, from the plants from the seeds that I started that I have in smaller containers and they definitely are gonna come here to my beds I have a lot of seeds I am not going to show you all of these but I have a combination of zinnias cosmos kale um, basil nasturtiums uh, master just a lot of things here that i'm going to do and hopefully i can show you a, i can give you an update here in, i don't know in about a month and show you how all of these are going are doing so before it gets like super super sunny and super hot i am going to try to work these plants around and hopefully we can fill these beds today and be done with them this right here is just a leftover piece of cattle panel that um, I had from other projects and I spray painted black and I bended it to the best of my abilities. And I cut the last uh, bottom line that was going uh, horizontal just so that I will have like some long um, feet or stakes to get into the soil and I know I know that doing this here in this raised bed is just going to be a lot easier than doing it, doing it in the ground. And this thing is not going anywhere. This thing is nice and solid. I'm just gonna make sure that it's even.
making raised beds for this spot right here is just it's a no-brainer the amount of gravel that is in the ground it just makes this space unusable for anything in ground and honestly i love the idea of just having areas confined areas for growing all the vegetables and all the flowers that i want 